Hello and welcome to the channel. This is your host, D-Day, bringing you Enigmatica 2 Expert Mode. If you're enjoying the series, please hit the like button, subscribe, and most importantly, leave a comment. Thank you so much and enjoy the show. Alrighty, so last time we ran out of lithium, so the first thing that I wanted to set up was um, moving the digital miner from the moon to the, uh, to, to the overworld. I used the scanner and the block scanner let's see uh the scanner module block i right clicked it on some borium because uh boron because i ran out of uh the lithium and i started flying around scanning with two of the scanner range increases and what i found was uh a nuclear craft chunk right here you can see them there's about four chunks and the fifth one it was standing standing on top of i set the machine to find lithium and uh, after it pumped out, I think 200 lithium, uh, I set it to go for the other nuclear craft so that it can clear out the, the chunks that I scanned for going into the ender chest. So uh, let's teleport back to mechanism so I can get some of that lithium going. Yep, we got 199 from that chunk. Uh, let's do three stacks. I'm going to keep some in ore form just in case I need to scan the ore specifically because that's why I was scanning boron so I didn't have any lithium to scan. So that'll start getting us to lithium. Uh, I went ahead and since we were so close to finishing the nuclear craft reactor we were actually only 11 fusion electromagnets off of uh, completing the unit. So I just made those 11 to make sure that there were no uh, hiccups when we get back here and start. Oh, and the digital miner that I have back there, it is, uh, it does have eight energy upgrades, eight speed upgrades, and the anchor upgrade so that it's always chunk loaded. So here we go. I finished the last 11 that were in this corner. Uh, let's plug in some fuel for it to burn down here get you in here set you to extract and then set this guy here set him to extract and now the unit should have fuel let's see if I can access the unit from down here at all Let's grab a pickaxe because I know I'm going to need it. And let's tag just this piece away so we can access the unit. It is now full of deuterium and tritium. Perfect. Uh, let's go upstairs and plug in some power so that it can start warming up. Let's see. I wanted to do it... like this one of these guys and then the advanced power cell put you on top and you are now outputting power into the unit and it is gathering temperature temperature change is going down because the liquid helium is already plugged in. Let's grab some ultimate cable because this ultimate cable won't uh, connect to the ender conduit. So we'll do that. Or it actually does connect to the ender conduit. do this and then I'll pull out the configurator all right let's see oh power is going up really high now it should activate any moment To 
Jur is running at negative. That's probably the reason why. Let's remove the fluid coolers for right now. That's probably the reason, like I had the fluid coolers already hooked up, so it wasn't able to activate because the heat was too low. So let's see, can I just break one of these or do I have to break the unit? Let me break the unit. Hopefully that didn't mess up everything. Put you back down. All right. Now let's see you turn on. So weird. I don't have any cooling attached to it now. Temperature going down. What did I do wrong? Coolers aren't active anymore. Remove the power real quick. Remove one of these. Can I reset the unit? What did I do wrong? Temperature change negative 526. Temperature going down. Ring interior blocked. Okay, so I ended up getting it to work. Uh, from what I learned, the uh, from breaking one piece at a time and replacing one piece at a time, the issue that I was having with the temperature flickering between negative 500 and about 1800 was because the active coolers were hooked up at the beginning before turning on the machine. The machine of course has to get generate a certain amount of heat so that it can initiate the fusion and having liquid coolers attached to it uh, it counteracts that heat so it gathers the heat but then probably something in the coding or the math with the negative values of the liquid helium and what's required for the ignition makes it stall. That's why it was flickering between the negative 500 and the 1000 and it wouldn't activate. The first, another issue that I had was the inner ring was obstructed, which in my case it was the cave illuminator was putting light sources inside. I had to destroy those light sources. Uh, but the second time we tried to turn on the machine, uh, the hydrogen ended up filling up 
and it stalled out and it turned the machine off, but I already had my liquid coolers hooked up to it again. So uh, when I turned it back on after uh, voiding the, the extra helium that was stalled our machine, it counted as being turned on with the coolers active again, so we had the same problem. Uh, I removed one piece at a time, and nothing seemed to matter. So I have a feeling that the fusion electromagnets store the data that uh, the coolers have, because I had to go into creative mode, had to destroy all of my blocks, and I had to redo everything. And the one thing that I destroyed, and I destroyed and redid the fusion core first. That didn't work. It was still flickering between negative 500 and 1000. Then I destroyed the 12 fusion connectors. Did that again? Nope. Still, pro still the same problem. Then I destroyed the entire fusion electromagnetic ring and recreated it with creative items. Uh, it's the same amount. I threw them all away, so I'm not cheating or anything like that. But when I replaced these, the cooling data, it disappeared. So I think the cooling data is stored inside of the electromagnets. Uh, what I did is I put down the fusion core, I put down the fusion connectors, I made the entire ring, I put down the power so that the uh, rings have power. And now I can go downstairs, I can show you, because it's up and running. Uh, I plugged in both of the fuel sources and the one thing that's important I clicked this button prevent input overflow that way it won't fill up both tanks with the first one you plug in so it put liquid deuterium and liquid tritium in opposite tanks with this button on then I learned my lesson I also clicked this button void input overflow so any kind any extra helium won't make the machine stall, it'll just void it. I should have had that button on. You can switch here between efficiency or heat, and I want it to gather efficiency. It's doing well right now. Uh, on this side, I had helium coming out. This portable tank filled up too fast, and that's why it stalled. It's attached to a trash can, so I'm voiding the excess helium this way. Uh, I'm pretty sure I can also just have it void in the unit itself, but uh, I want to make sure that the helium is coming out of this direction so that the neutron fluid is coming out in this direction, and it's very, very slowly filling up the neutron fluid in here. I'll upgrade this tank, but since this button down here, void output overflow, since this is clicked, we don't have to worry about the reactor stalling because of uh, this issue of... Uh, uh, the the export fluids clogging the system. So here I have uh, active cooling rate 6600. Uh, it's 132 percent. It's not perfect. A uh, perfect would be 100 percent. So this is cooling a little bit too much. But I didn't want to have to uh, do a ridiculous amount of water coolers. I just wanted two active coolers of liquid helium that is generating passively. I don't have to touch this machine. That is good enough for me. This temperature change is going down from 15,000. The temperature itself is going up. It's almost 500,000 now. But once that temperature change uh, hits zero, it'll, it should go negative because of the cool active cooling rate being over 5,000, uh, the temperature, the total temperature will just stop. Uh, and the efficiency, I believe, will go around 97% for it to, to be functioning. Power, you already see it's already running at 1.5 uh, million RF a tick, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the next thing I need to do, since this is now sustaining itself, the next thing I need to do, which I'll do next stream, is uh, I have to run the uh, power, the one point, what was it exactly? The 1.5 million RF needs to come out. So I was gonna run a power cable down here. And I originally wanted to do the second part of this episode uh, I wanted to build an induction matrix, which I'll just do that tomorrow since I ran out of time. 
uh, the machine is running. Efficiency is going to go up to about 97. The temperature is going to stand still. Uh, neutron fluid's coming out. And uh, right now, all I got to do is uh, babysit the machine and make sure that uh, we are generating enough uh, deuterium and tritium for it to run. So it was a little bit of a choppy episode. I'm going to have to do some editing in this one because there's a lot of lulls of me not figuring out why the fusion reactor is not working or why it has stopped working. Uh, a, a, it went a little buggy for a second there. But uh, as far as I know now, the fusion reactor is up and running and uh, all I need to do is make sure that it continues running, that I don't have to uh, actively do anything for this to generate power. So thank you so much for watching and tune in tomorrow. I'll be making the elite induction matrix that can store and transfer all of the power that this fusion reactor is making. Thank you.